Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome to the studios of the Evangelist Ministry. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we have spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. My dear friends, our mission is to guide souls to Christ. Our mission is to reconcile this world with God. My dear friends, it's a privilege, it's a blessing to be back at the Studios of the Evangelist Ministry. But my dear friends, the subject of this morning is rejoice in the Lord always. Let's open the Bible. Let's open the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 9. The Bible says this, Therefore, my brother, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so I stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech, O dears, and beseech Santiki, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And, and I Intrigued thee also through your fellow. Help those women which, which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I said, rejoice. Lest your moderation be now unto all men, the Lord is a hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made now unto God. And the peace of God, which bears all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good, report if there be any <clears throat> virtue, if there be any price. Think on these things. Those things where you have both learned and receive and heard and see in me. Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again. Wherein you were also careful, but you lack opportunity. My dear friends, it's a good moment to think about rejoice on the Lord. Yes, my dear friend, rejoice on the Lord. This is the moment to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, To rejoice in the Lord always is not primarily a matter of feeling, but it's a matter of faith. Worldly happiness is not the same as godly happiness. I want to make it you to understand that worldly happiness is not the same as godly happiness. Godly happiness is called joy. Did I make myself understand clear? <clears throat> I say that God, godly happiness is called joy. Happiness depends on the event of the moment, but 
joy is having Jesus Christ in our personal life and heart. In the Bible, the word joy is a celebration term. Though Paul is calling for celebration. The difference between joy and secular happiness is that later depends on what's happened. It's circumstantially driven. So, if things are going in an upward direction in your personal life, you feel up, you feel victorious. Yes, my dear friends, you feel that you have triumphed in your personal life. But if things are going down, you feel down and you feel depressed. My dear friends, this keeps you in an emotional roller coaster. Yes, indeed. Sometimes you're going to be up, sometimes you're going to go down. But when you have the joy of the Lord, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Daily. Not once in a while, but daily. Because when you have Jesus Christ in your heart, joy is permanent in your personal life. My dear friends, biblical joy, by contrast, has to do with stability and celebration on the inside, regardless of circumstances of the outside. We must choose to rejoice in order to experience the joy that God promised to us on a daily basis. This, this joy from God is not once in a while, but it's a daily is daily in our personal life. My dear friends, let's think about Paul. Paul exhorted the, the Philippians to stand fast in the Lord, give direction to some and to all in general, and Paul expressed contentment in every condition of his life. He said, the believing hope and prospect of eternal life should make us steady and constant in our Christian walk. Which is true, my dear friends. I say, my dear friends, that the believing hope, the believer's hope and prospect of eternal life should make us steady and constant in our Christian walk. Yes, my dear friend, there is different of gift and grace, yet being renewed by the same Spirit, we are brothers or sisters in Christ. To stand fast in the Lord is to stand fast in His strength and draw near to His grace. Did I make myself understand, my friends? Amen. The Bible said, therefore, my brother, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dear beloved. Philippians chapter 1 verse 1. So the scripture convey that rejoice in the Lord is to have joy or delight in the Lord. To feel joy when you think of him always. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. My dear friends, to feel the joy of the Lord, believer must be of, of one mind <clears throat> and ready to help each other, to agree with each other and the Lord, which is a great benefit for us as a Christians. My dear friends, Paul knew how comfortable it would be to his fellow laborers to have the help of others. Let's think about how helpful we will be to the pastor. If we help pastor and everything we can do. That's why. Let us seek to give assurance that our name are written in the book of life. Joy and God is of great consequences in the Christian life. That's why. Always exhort people to grow spiritually 
And Christians need to be again and again exhorted to grow as a spiritually and now as a carnal Christians to be and to grow of one mind. Hey, Philippians chapter 4 verse 2 said, I beseech the world and beseech Sintike that they be of the same mind and the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 Verse 2, very clear, my dear friends, very clear, Paul talks to, to his fellow laborers, saying, I entreat Otia, and I entreat and take it to agree in the Lord. You see, everything we do at church, my dear friend, we must, I say, we must agree in the Lord. But my dear friends, I tell you this morning, I tell you this morning, Paul suffering, shipwrecked, beating, imprisoning. Paul has seen the downside of life. He has also no prosperity. He was a rich man. He was a very well educated person. But my dear friends, both he suggests offer temptation. Did I say myself clear? But Paul had discovered a secret for contentment in all situations. Do you understand what I mean? In all situations, his deeply personal sense of living in Christ, praise Jesus, and his found strength to handle anything. When you have sense of living for Jesus Christ, you will find a strength to handle anything come to your life. Did I say clear? Amen. So my dear friend, but constant prayer is recommended. Not only in a certain times, but in everything by prayer. Did I make myself understand? Amen. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Paul was often in bonds, imprisonment, and necessities, but in all, he learns to be content. Wow, praise Jesus, hallelujah. He learned to be content, to bring his mind to his condition and make the best of it. It's exactly what we should do in our personal life, do the best of the day, no matter what happened and that particular day. Did I make myself understand? <clears throat> Let's come back a little bit. Paul was often in bonds, imprisonment, and necessities, but in all he learned to be content, to bring his mind to his condition and make the best of it. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, and help these women who have labor side by side with me and the gospel together with Clement and the rest of the, my fellow workers whose name are in the book of life. He is just begging for his co laborers my dear friends, and he must be imprisoned. My dear friends, Philippians chapter 4 verse 3 said, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with all of my fellow laborers, whose name are in the book of life. Philippians chapter 4 verse 3. But he continues saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it. Again, rejoice. What a wonderful man. I wish that we can. I said, I wish that we all can learn from Paul. Make the best of the worst day. The peace of God. The comfortable sense of being reconciled with God. And having part of his favor. And the hope of the kingdom of heaven. Are great good that can be fully expressed. This peace will keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. It will keep us from sinking on the troubles and from sinking on the them. Keep us calm, 
peaceful with inward satisfaction. Rejoice in the Lord. And I say, and again I say, rejoice. Philippians 4, chapter 4. Amen? Amen. Now, my dear friends, rejoice in the Lord. I will say it again, rejoice. The peace of God, the comfortable sense of being reconciled with God and having part in his favor and the hope of the kingdom of heaven are great and good that can be fully expressed. This peace will keep all hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. It will keep us from sinking on the trouble and from sinking on the dam. Keep us calm and peaceful with inward satisfaction. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 4. My dear friends, the Apostle Paul is telling to the church of Philippi in a letter to always rejoice in the Lord, always celebrate the Lord. This carries the understanding that you do it whether you want it or not, whether you are happy with the Lord or not, when you celebrate with right thought in mind about how God worked it will be possible to find ways to rejoice in the Lord. Did I make myself clear, my friends? Amen. My dear friends, this carry the understanding that you do, you do whatever you want it or not, whatever, wh whether you are happy with the Lord or not, when you celebrate with the right thought in mind about how God works, it will be possible to find ways to rejoice in the Lord. Let us examine the following passages in, in, in Philippians chapter 4. Read the whole, the, 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 the whole, whole Philippians chapter 4. And my dear friends, to see why this, this advice from Paul is so profound and how we can agree to this belief of God's greatness in all times, in good or bad situation, finding the joy inside, building up as we give him thanks. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My dear friends, when you celebrate with right thought and mind about how God works, it will be possible to find ways to rejoice in the Lord. Let, let, let us examine the following passage in, in Philippians chapter 4. To see this advice from Paul is so profound and how we can agree to disbelief. If God's greatness at all time in God of best situation, finding the joy inside, building up as we give thanks to God. My dear friends, did I make myself understand? Amen. My dear friends, the book of Philippians is the Apostle Paul letter to the church of Philippi to share with them wisdom and encouragement for living out their faith in Jesus Christ and standing strong when struggle and persecution might occur. Wow. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> My dear friends, remember that when it comes to suffering for your calling, when it comes to suffering for your ministry, Paul definitely is the expert. He endured severe persecution for he believed in Jesus Christ and he endured severe persecution for his ministry. So advice from him on rejoicing during trial seems to be a good idea. Did I make myself clear? Amen. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your attitude be evident. The Lord is near. Amen. 
God is coming and is coming for his church. My dear friends, a name for God it is. The Lord is near. Believers are to get and to keep a good name. A name for good things with God. A good testimony. Good behavior. Walking with the Lord daily. We should walk in the ways of virtue. Or virtue. And abide therein. The Apostle Paul is a good example. His doctrine and life agree together. Now my question is, your life and your doctrine agree on a daily basis. Think about that, my dear friends. Let your moderation be now unto all men. The Lord is the hand. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. My dear friends, the Lord is near. Is near. Jesus is coming and coming again. The Bible said, do not be anxious about anything. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We must, I say we must join thanksgiving with prayers and supplication. Not only seek supplies of God, but on the mercies we have received. God need to be told or wants or desires. Believe it or not, my friend, do you agree with me? Amen. God need not to be told or wants or desires. He knows them better than we do. But he will have us show that we value the mercy and feel our dependency of him. We must depend Amen. on him. The Bible said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. My dear friends, we can get to a conclusion. The book of Philippians is the Apostle Paul's letter to the church of Philippi to share with them wisdom, and encouragement for living out their faith in Christ <clears throat> and standing strong when struggles and persecution might occur. Remember that when we come to suffering for your calling or for your ministry, definitely Paul is the expert. He endured severe persecution for his belief in Christ and called to ministry. So, advice from him and rejoice during this trial seems to be a good idea. Amen? Amen, amen my dear friend. Amen. amen. My dear friends, I have nothing else to say, but my dear friends, I just want to tell you one thing. God bless you and God bless America.